Good morning, everybody. It is the 26th of December, the day after Christmas. Um, you know, usually today or this whole week is kind of uh, kind of a slower week, just like last week was. Um, I got my. I have to get a new camera. Mine is just forked for a while. Um, you know. Like I was, I've been saying this ever since the week leading up to Christmas and the Christmas now is that um, every, kind of every day until after the first, or even sometimes even that week of the first of January, uh, we we kind of get just kind of kind of dull movement, um, you know, for two to three weeks. So it might not be till after next week. That we will see, uh, you know, some re-engagement in activity into these markets. Um, you know, hope you all had a really great Christmas or or a break. You know that uh, you got a little R and R and feel a little more relaxed. Are able to come back into this. Uh, I I regard the twenty second of December just in the style of approach that I take the markets. I, I use GANs. Uh, D D William Delbert Gann's approach to analyzing market cycles. Um, so I, I regard the 22nd of December as the uh, start of a new cycle. Um, you know, we will see what happens this week, but, you know, if we kind of look over the price action of last week, looking at the euro and you know we'll get to cryptocurrencies too we're going to add those as part of our uh, daily analysis and look um, you know last week I believe that was last week hold on let me add, hold this up here uh, let's see, was it the 18th through the 22nd yeah you know, we, we didn't get a whole lot of crazy movement. We, we did just kind of get a straight up move. Um, you know, I, I, I'm lower muted volume from, uh, you know, 1740 all the way up to 18, uh, 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 the eight, well, to 119. Um, but we were really stalled out from there. And we've kind of been stalling ever since. On the 20th, we... We hit that high, but we've just kind of been uh, fading back down here. We this line right here. I'll make it a little thicker. That's kind of our longer trend line. If we go all the way back to the top peak of this last swing high, and um, what this means is that. That we, we've tested the value area above it, but we, we have fallen back down. It's going to be interesting to see how we react to this. You know, holidays are, are just really kind of uh, junky times to trade because uh, it's lower volume <clears throat> and the, the, the movement is very dull. And it's usually one direction. So if, if we're already in a range, it may stay in a range. If it's already trending up, you know, on a shorter, longer time frame, up or down, it will, it will more than likely continue that trend and it will respect these trend lines um, you know we had a little bit of a false breakout here you might call it it's yeah you know, we'll, we'll see what happens <clears throat> right here where price is at right now we're at you know 118.51 um, what you know some people may be asking well why is it moving up why is it moving why isn't it going down um, it's just don't worry about that. Uh, when you try to find reasons for something, you just kind of go insane. All we can really do is read the price action, all right, and and kind of gauge what is is uh, happening on our screens. Clean this up a little bit for you. So we have our this light angle here. This is part of our our, our GAN. Uh, uh, box or square of 144. Um, this has been 
This was acting as resistance and finally was, was broken up above. It has tested uh, one, two, three, maybe you could call it four times, but it has not gone lower. We, we have found some support and coiling trading action on this 118.51 line. Uh, but you know we'll see kind of what happens on the hourly here. We have uh, you know we are neutral, but trending towards oversold. Uh, even though it kind of had a little bounce up here on the RSI, we are very much oversold on the uh, composite index down here. So uh, uh, you know based on the hourly, a bounce here is is appropriate to to forecast. If we look at the eight hour though, you know, we are we are not looking at uh, we're not looking at a whole lot of movement back to the top. In fact, this whole area above here is indicative of um, indicative of, of it rolling rounding out and wanting to come back down. Um, so my projection for movement, if we break that area, and I'm talking about the 18, 1850 area, if we can break below that, we should at least trade back into the, to test this angle here. All right. Um, Do. do a short at um, less than uh, 1845 but we want it to we want it to hold we want it, we really want to close below the uh, gray an GAN angle. Okay. You know, also there is there is the possibility that this just ranges. You know that that this entire movement here won't do it a, a thing, um, just because of the you know the, the the weekend week that we're in and going into next week as well. This is just you know you got you got to be careful of trading uh, forex at this time of year especially regular equities or futures it just isn't a great trading time I'm, I'm going to keep preaching that every day until it's not a great trading time um, you know I I only have one position open in Forex and that's that's my my short that I've had short since uh, about 1835 or so um, and I'm comfortable holding that there for a long time I don't uh, it triggered in an area that was that was appropriate based on the levels and everything else has been kind of trading up in over bought conditions and even though things can trade in over bought conditions there's really there's really nothing major that that tells me outside of technicals that this should be continuing to move up so uh, my, my bias is still short um, you know if we do close above this this trend line here and we find support again at this angle there is a good possibility of price shooting back up, but you know we'll we'll see what happens. You know when we meet again tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning, see what happens there. Um, looking at the other uh, pair, the uh, dollar yen. You know this has been pretty flat. You know, um, I mean, what do you say about this? It's just. Uh, when there's not a lot of trade opportunities, there's not a lot of trade opportunities. This has been uh, stuck in a range, and it has been contracting tighter and tighter. We are in totally neutral uh, conditions on our, both of our oscillators. We are trading right in the, the point of control and the, in the middle and our value area. You know, if uh, we took a kind of a trend line here. And those two points are even from here we broke out above, but let's go to this one. 
We're still above that. Trading arbitrary trend lines like this is always um, never a good idea, but especially when you're flat like this. I mean, there's just a lot of a lot of indecision going on with this pair. Um, why did it? Uh, yeah. But the the key area for the dollar yen pair is above the um, the uh, thirteen thirty three line here, but but also it's it's above these angles. We would like to get back above these angles in the thirteen forty six to thirteen fifty area. You know, we'll see if that happens. Um, there is a good case for some bearish momentum because we haven't we have been trending lower. It has been continuing to want to trend lower. Uh, we don't see any reason why it wouldn't continue to trend lower. Um, what has made the the yen and the and the the euro dollar pair such a kind of a frustrating trade from you know kind of a roughly week and a half ago to this to last week to now is that. Uh, they have both been trading up. The dollar uh, yen and the euro dollar have both been uh, trading up, and you know it's hard to. Usually they move in the inverse of one another, but they haven't. And that's it's just holiday trading for you. I do not have a trade here. I would not suggest putting. I, I'm not going to suggest to myself to put anything here. Um, you know, if if anything, I'm. I'm looking at this chart, and I do see a case for it to continue to, ramp, you know, this really shallow channel down. But uh, you know, any major supportive stuff, you know, since we did have this nice rise up and we've kind of paused, uh, you might consider this consolidation. Uh, we did have responsive buying here on the 25th at. Um, you know, at when 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 the forex market opened yesterday, we we did have supportive buying here. You know, there was not a lot of pressure to move. And if we look at the volume over here, this there's tons of buying, tons of supportive structure here. We've just kind of had you know neutral volume for buying and selling up where it's at right now. So we'll see what happens here. These are again, these are not fun times to trade. If you're new to trading, I, I I really think that this is the worst time for you to be doing it, to learn how to trade, because there are not a lot of great opportunities out there and it's just not really indicative of how uh, uh, an active market moves. Um, let's look at one more pair, the Euro Pound. You know, this this has been the one that's probably had the most activity it it holds the most structure um, you know it's continuing to trade up following this this uh, this this is the 45 GAN angle so this is really really important you should expect that this that price will respect this line um, for, for quite a while we are approaching a confluence of time and price over here uh, we should get there by midnight um, the on, on the 9th of January but you know, for now, we are continuing to move. Um, how this may play out is we have a GAN angle up here and GAN angle support down here and very much this kind of movement, um, which may very well, they may very well, they may very well, may very well uh, be the kind of trade that's happening, and it may not even want to go above the the uh, 88.96. Maybe it will hit 89 and get some pressure up. But th the highest top side potential I see this pair moving until after next week is the 89.60. Uh, here uh, again, this is not. I mean, if you're wanting to range trade this, you just trade the top and bottom of these of this triangle. So your you know, your first short opportunity is going to be at 89.20. Um, uh, da, 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 da. And then, 
long at whatever the value area is going to be when we get down here. So, you know, 1840 to 1850. Or sorry, 8840 to 8850. You just kind of have to judge where price is at if you're really wanting to. Uh, you know, watch a pot boil. This is going to be the one to watch. And I don't think it's surprising that the the movement, um, you know, ending in this confluence of time after the holiday weeks is on the night because that's just a that's a that's the Tuesday after the Monday. That's that's Monday the eighth is our first full uh, uh, trade day. Trade beginning of our first full trade week without a holiday, so you know just watch that whole this whole movement here. And again, if you're trading in U.S. time, you're you're not you're going to miss out on a lot of this because you know this is a London time is the big trader of this. Um, let's look at cryptos right now, and uh, if you remember this from last week. Um, this arc represents the strongest area of resistance in time and price that that uh, any instrument will face if you if you've applied this tool correctly. And so, I've had this on here for quite quite a while before this. Well, right kind of right during this range here where this triangle's at, and we've we've re really respected this. This last arc for for you know the whole time of it being there, we've had attempts to test above it. This is strong resistance right up here at that twenty thousand level with this arc. That was just a you know people thinking that they would be able to get a long up here, you know, to buy in and um, be able to uh, catch the catch a rally above twenty thousand. It just there wasn't anything indicating that would happen because. Sometimes you got to go to these longer time frames to see what's happening. What ha what was happening with prices? Price went up. Price went up, shot up like crazy. But what happened? Volume decreased. Volume decreased a lot. That is never a good sign. But we have had the same kind of response to lowering prices that Bitcoin has displayed through its entire history is that when when a great discount represents itself you have huge volume participation it, 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 this really doesn't matter if this is red or green that we're just concerned with like the amount and that's a huge amount of volume that that bought this back up we had a little bit more trading and sell up here and then into the you know the the, the last the ending of kind of last week we had you know a lot of sell off here. This, this really this represents from twenty thousand to just slightly above, you know, a uh, ten thousand, or we could just call this uh, ten five. This is you know this is nearly a fifty percent decrease in value over a six day period. Um, is that a big deal? No, <laughs> and I'm saying no because Bitcoin has lost. 80% of its value four or five times in its entire history. So, 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 so in in the in the timeline of an investment, or or a timeline of a long-term position trader, an 80% loss of value is totally normal for this pair. And 50%, that's that's not uh, that's not uh, different either. And so all we've really had when these happen is we've had uh, supportive buying and again you know arcs are, are like areas of resistance and support you know if you break through an area of resistance it turns into an area of support like if price breaks up above this line I mean that's not a good example of it but price breaks above the 1500 handle here trades up tests it again support and boom 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 you know you can see examples of this in any instrument um, the arc, though, once the arcs are broken, they turn into huge support zones. 
So what you have when price is, is in these areas is, is the support arc is like a wave. It's like a tide pushing it back. And the, the, the arc here is like a, um, is, is like a, it's like, it's just like a big ball. And this is a ping pong ball. It's like a pong from the old Atari game. That's, that's essentially all you have going on here. And we just had support of buying the lower we've gone. And time just kind of played out as the winner here because uh, additionally, this orange line is is the end of a GAN cycle. This is the end of a major GAN cycle. This is beginning. This is where I consider the beginning of a new time cycle is for the entire year, December twenty second. Um, that's one of the most important dates in 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 all of GAN's uh, important time cycles and and dates is December twenty second, and it's not. A coincidence that you have such drastic price action the closer we get to it um, or, or to see these kind of big reversals off here is this a true reversal we'll have to see you know the thing about reversals trend reversals or continuations is that you have to wait to see if it is one <laughs> you know you can't you can't really it's like um, I, I don't know it's it's like a head and shoulders pattern. You don't you don't know that one's going to form until after it has done so. So we don't know if this is actual trend reversal until it actually uh, has you know moved beyond our twenty thousand area. But what we have done is we stopped respecting this arc over the last few hours. Well, over the last ever since um, what do we got here? Where's my cursor in that? Uh, I'll lock the cursor in time. We have lost, not lost, over the last, uh, ever since 11 o'clock central time last night to now, we've been kind of stuck in this little pennant forming, little flag pattern. Um, we have stayed in this range and we have not wanted to go below this this uh, Fibonacci, um, this 2 1 line, which is a very big support line. And we have not gone below the arc. We, we've kind of tested that area. We've respected the 15,000 level as, as a support area. So, you know, it's it's um, strong support for continuing movement to the top side. Where's my arc side going this thing? You know, we are overbought. This is, this is a you know, great selling uh, sign right here. But we're not getting massive response to continued selling here. We're not getting the kind of action we saw all of last week. We're seeing a lot more supportive buying action. Uh, if we bring it even down to the 30 minute chart, um, you know, we're, we're kind of trading neutral. We're trending into neutral. We're already in neutral territory uh, with our oscillators. So, you know, expect a bit of a range and consolidation before you want to move up. You know, there's no reason why Bitcoin won't move higher. You know, it, there's just not a lot of reason for it. Um, you know, there's the only thing that would really kind of flush this thing down the tubes is if somebody in the in, in government was saying um, we have to regulate this. Let's get the SEC on it. Then you'd see a real flush uh, of this instrument. But otherwise, it's just got too much participation for it to decrease a lot in price. You know, depending what you read, people are calling for, um, you know, anywhere between, I've seen anywhere between 50,000, today I read 60,000, and I've even heard people say up to like 150 or 200,000 for, for 2018. That's a little wild, <laughs> um, but, you know, who ever thought that Bitcoin would touch even 10,000? You know, I, you know, it's, this is a very new thing still. The other uh, majors, I like, I just use coin, coin, whatever's traded on Coinbase, I kind of consider the, the, the majors for, for, uh, for Bitcoin or for, for cryptocurrencies. Ethereum, you know, it's, it's had its own similar movement here. Um, I don't have a lot of, lot drawn on here, but uh, go to the daily. We'll see similar volume and price 
uh, how, how it has played out compared to uh, what Bitcoin's chart looked at. Likewise, Litecoin is the same deal. Now, Litecoin, Litecoin is a little bit of a different beast because uh, it. All right, Bitcoin has a futures contract. The two largest derivatives markets in the world, the CBOE and the CME, and the CME is just really the largest by any stretch of the means, uh, uh, definition rather. Um, they, it has a futures contract. And Ethereum is the only other coin that really has been mentioned as having one itself at some point here in the future too. So, you know, those two are the highest kind of growth value coins that actually have some, you know, recognition outside of just the crypto sphere in general. Litecoin, um, people love it or hate it. And um, the owner or the founder of uh, Litecoin last week uh, mentioned that he got rid of all of his Litecoin. Um, he cited it was for uh, yeah, conflict of interest reasons. He, you know, he, he had mentioned that he felt like he couldn't say anything good about his about Litecoin without it being construed as you know, uh, you know, pumping it up. Uh, I get that, but you know, it's 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 a little weird. You know, a lot of these ICOs, these initial coin offerings, people fund them. The founders get get you know, a whole lot of influx of capital, and they sell right away. If they had to follow the same rules as IPOs, you wouldn't be able to do that. I mean, it'd be interesting to see how many people who are supportive of the coins that they are putting out for ICOs are comfortable enough holding a losing hand until they would be able to actually sell. If they have to follow the rules for IPOs where you can't sell your stake or your stock or your options for, you know, X amount of years, um, you know, how much faith do these people have in their coins if... If they're just going to dump them right away, probably not a lot. <clears throat> um, you know, the altcoins all over the last last over the weekend and last week they were just um, going bonkers. I'm just looking at which one to look at here. Probably you know, block BTC. Um, if we look at this one, it had quite a bit of, of, of action from um, last week all the way to last night. We just had a crazy uptrend. These, these altcoins were raising in between, you know, it wasn't uncommon to see some of them above 50 and 60 percent. Uh, so, so, you know, now that Bitcoin has broken through that real big resistance area, um, you know, we'd like to see it move up higher because it's just not a lot of conviction behind it yet. Uh, but but now we've just had a lot of sell off in these altcoins, which is pretty normal. I mean, these are if you were trading forex, uh, you would or anything really. Twenty three percent, twenty two percent, fifteen percent. These are so very common percentage losses in altcoins. This is not unusual at all. Um, cryptocurrencies account for. You know, probably 40% of my aggregate trading volume. I, I do futures, forex, and, and now cryptocurrencies. And there's a just a, a crap ton of wild movements that happen. Um, you know, but these are not short. I mean, you can short in some exchanges, but for you know, in reality, these are not shortable instruments yet. So all of the selling that happens is just people who have long positions. You know, just getting rid of it. So again, looking at Bitcoin here, we we do have. Uh, I'll go back to the hourly. You know, if you're if you're like me, and, and what one of the nice things about these markets where you can't short them very easily, it's like equities in that respect. You know, if you ever have traded regular stocks when you want to short. Apple, you have to pay a premium to do so, um, and you know that that's that's a limited supply, um, and Bitcoin's a limited supply too. You know, not all of it has been mined, but this is more like a commodity than a currency in, in a lot of respects. But one of the nice things about an instrument that you know can't be shorted by the masses is that 
then you just have essentially, you know, pullbacks that you can repurchase on. So you can look at, um, I, I, uh, I'm not looking to go long yet again. I, I, I mean, I have Bitcoin positions all, all over the place as far as where my entries were. Um, but uh, um, where are we at here to do? I would like to see a Bitcoin trade above 16,660 before I, I would um, go long. And, well, you know, just if this is disregarding this low there um, I find a angle here that's being respected well there we go look at that I am looking at that and this trend line was broken up where it's at now and if I use another one here any break above and we're, we're out of this, like if we extended this channel, I should really do that. What about failure there? Yeah, that's pretty decent. You know, don't don't be so exact about drawing channels and support and resistance lines because they're just zones. You know, th these are not like static. Like sixteen. When I say sixteen thousand six hundred and sixty, I don't mean that level exactly. Like, I mean, anywhere slightly above or below is where you should look at those the, these zones. In fact, kind of if, if, if you're more of a visual person like me, support and resistance loans instead of straight lines, they should you should view them like 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 this, like these areas. It's like a like a force field around an area. Okay, that makes sense. But, you know, th there's a breakout range here. If you want an aggressive entry, I, I like the 17, or sorry, 15,760. And, um,. Then again, I wouldn't go until uh, probably 16,800 maybe. That'd be my next area. But but again, you, you want to watch where your oscillators are. If you're only using, you should you should use a couple oscillators. Uh, I always use the RSI and then the composite index. And on TradingView, I should, if anybody's wondering what that is, um, the composite index is created by uh, a lady named Constance Brown, and it's this one right here, uh, Constance Brown Composite Index. She is like, I would love to meet this lady and pick her brain. She is the smartest, best educator for technical analysis, I, I think. I don't know if she's the best, but I, I, you know, in my opinion, she's the best. A lot of her materials required for the chartered market uh, a technician uh, license. Um, she's just a, a wonderful... Uh, she's passionate about technical analysis. Like she's a nerd about it. I'm a nerd about it. So I get her 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 passion, and it's reflected in her um, in her writings. In fact, w one of the best books you could ever read is Technical Analysis for the Trading Professional. I think is the title of the book. But in the kind of the opening, when she's talking about, uh, I think maybe when she's talking about how she developed this this uh, uh, this indicator. Uh, which is essentially just the it's the momentum indicator of an RSI. Um, she uh, uh, talked about how they how there used to be a whole lot of technical analysis conferences and and uh, you know get-togethers, but then they kind of turned into um, you know the, the people who organized it wanted the rights to anything that was being discussed or talked about, and people started selling stuff. And uh, you know it, it wasn't just like a place for people who were artists. In this field, and who were passionate about the 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 science and the art of technical analysis, they couldn't just talk about that as a group because there was another there was the business component of it ruining that, um, which is unfortunate because you know this is 
This is as much of an art as a science technical analysis. But anyways, I like to use those two indicators here, um, especially when they match structure visually. You get a lot of really great, I, I think I've, I've done this for you guys before, maybe it was for somebody else, but those horizontal lines here that I've placed in both of these oscillators indicate similar structure. I did that one on a longer time frame. But when you see it's really kind of touching these oversold areas, and you have some oversold conditions here, you get some buying. You know, we can see this as we move back to here in these oversold conditions, similar visual structure, you get buying response, buying response. Similarly, when you see it really up like that, it's you'll get some selling response. So um, you know, this isn't the greatest area for me to want to go long in again, but I do want to see a breakout here. Uh, I would ideally like to see a breakout um, where, um, see, as long as the CMI is below these two moving averages, these are the, the moving averages of an RSI, the green and the yellow, the, the uh, green is the faster, the yellow is the slower. As long as the CMI is below those lines, and ideally the green is below the yellow, but um, this is still isn't really a no buy zone. If we get a nice break above this triangle, that's a, you know we should see some good movement towards the top side. Um, but we'll see. You know, cryptocurrencies definitely have a lot more action than forex during the holidays because forex is open. I mean, cryptocurrencies they never close. They're always open every holiday. They're open every day. They're open Sundays. They never close. So, you know, oftentimes you'll find a lot more opportunities for trades in cryptos than, than Forex, especially during holidays. Um, that's kind of becoming a thing that I've noticed. Um, so just, you know, be careful even of trading cryptocurrencies in general, but also this is, again, this is a, this is a holiday week. Uh, we're going to have muted volume. People are still at Christmas. Um, People are still celebrating, you know, a lot of people, traders in general, don't trade at all until after the first, until the first full week of trading after the first. So just be, be aware of that, you know, um, but we'll, we'll be, I'll be with you every day this week. And then, you know, we'll uh, try and see if there's any great opportunities out there. Uh, I did not mention gold. Uh, gold has just had one direction <laughs> at trade again it, it, it's been an over it's been an overbought territory but it keeps trending higher so uh, you know those are never great trading conditions you know, it's the, it's the, it has a lot of structure consolidation and, and, and break out above you could probably expect that to happen throughout this entire holiday time but uh, again uh, you know I hope you guys had a great Christmas if you're still on on your your break you know enjoy it spend have good times with your family and, um, you know, we'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.